Hello, my name is Jim Balasera, and I want to welcome you to the show. I'm here with Donna Gunzelman from North Carolina. And I've known Donna for quite some time, and I'm just really excited and humbled that she was willing to come out from North Carolina to California to sit through an interview like this and give us the opportunity to kind of share her experience and how she has helped so many other people like herself. You know, Donna, the longer that I've gotten to know you, the more I've begun to realize your story and, and really how incredible it is and the, the things that you've gone through and experiences that you've had to live through. And uh, I have to tell you, I'm extremely impressed because I've seen uh, another side of Donna that, to be honest with you, I, I, I just didn't know was there. And, um, and that's part of what makes me humbled to be here today with you because I know that you've paid a, a lot more than one price to be here today. Um, you're very successful. You're an entrepreneur. You, you've worked extremely hard. You're a mother of three. Um, you've been through, um, i got to be careful what I say, but I want to say it anyways, you've been to hell and back, and, um, and yet you just keep fighting. And for that, um, I think that uh, it, it really it, it, it makes me want to not only know more about you, but also to share your experience with other people through this show and, uh, and, and help you to help the women that you're planning on helping throughout uh, your goals. Donna, you want to just share a little bit about your experience and what led you to get here today? Well, um, my goals are kind of unique, but uh, d just the life that, that I lived up until just a few years ago was a very difficult one. Um, it, it's not always easy to talk about, but it's real and it happens. So it gave me a real compassion for other women uh, who have to be in the same situation that I was in and feel like they just don't have a way out. You want to tell us a little bit about the situation you're referring to? The situation is being in an abusive uh, home setting. Um, when you are battered and mentally abused for years and years and years, then, you know, it tends to really wear on you and, and wear you down, uh, and you don't feel like you have a way out. I, I'm sure at some point in your relationship, it must have really affected your mindset, your worthiness, whether you could ever break free or whether you could ever really take care of yourself. If you did break free, you want to share a little bit of that insight? Yes. Well, you know, when you're told over and over and over again that nobody will ever love you, no one will love your children, you know, you, you tend to start believing stuff like that whether you want to or not. You know, you unconsciously do and you feel like you're in this closet. And, you know, it, it's something that you never ask for, certainly, and, and no woman or anybody, for that matter, ever deserves to be in that position. Um, so that's, you know, that's why I uh, kind of have this dream. Now, you've shared some things with me that, I have to admit, it put the hair on the back of my neck straight up. And I don't know how comfy, comfortable you are with sharing this, but... Uh, you know, you're here for two reasons. You're an entrepreneur. You're extremely successful. I'm extremely proud of you for that, by the way. But you have fought an interesting fight. And, um, and if it's okay, I'm going to go ahead and share what you've told me, and I'd like you to elaborate on that. Um, when you say abusive relationship, sometimes it means that someone abused you uh, verbally. And, of course, that did happen. But it went a little bit further than that. And if you just want to elaborate on that a little bit. Yes, well... Um it got to the point to where I, I was getting hit um, more times than I, I care to remember, um, you know, and, and the affairs that, that went on during that marriage. And, and by the way, that lasted for like 17 years. Um, and, you know, people say, why did you stay in, in an abusive situation like that for so long? But, you know, when you have children and you just don't feel like you can walk away you, and, and along with the other things that I told you about you know the brainwashing if you will um, you know it, it's just a very hard thing um, he I was put in the hospital several times with with the abuse and most of those times I was pregnant with one of or the other of my children um, so it it um, it, it it's just an extremely difficult thing to talk about sometimes, but you have to because there's other women out there that are going through this right now that feel the same that same way that I did, you know, like there's no way out. Either they're afraid 
that they're going to get hurt again for trying to get out or they don't have the resources to get out or you know they have nowhere to go and so they stay for one of those reasons or all of those reasons you know you said you were in that relationship for 17 years and obviously you had a job and as well as being a mother is that correct yes so you were doing all the typical things in a normal relationship except you had you were being bad right okay at some point finally after 17 years and I think part of your mes mission, if I'm not mistaken, is that you're trying to help other women realize that, you know, hey, you don't have to stay there and certainly put up with it for the amount of time that you did. Right. And so you're reaching out right now and, and you're trying to offer hope. Right. Okay. In, in a multitude of ways. So when you finally made this decision, I mean, there's a lot of things that came with it because you took your children with you. Yeah. And so you had to fend for yourself and feed them and all that kind of stuff and put a roof over their heads. But before you get into that, what? was the final straw. What was it that, I think you said something about your mother and what she said to you, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. You, you want to share that? Yeah, you know, my family for a while tried to, you know, tried to get me to leave because it hurt them as well to know that, that I was being hurt. And, you know, it, it got to the point to where a couple of times when um, my oldest son was just little, he may have been two years old, um, there was an instance where, um, you know, you try to hide as much from the kids as you can, you know, but there's times that you just can't, that things get so explosive so quick that, you know, he went to hit me, and, and when I turned away, he hit my son and bloodied his nose. And that, I think, was one of the things that said, you have to get out. And one of the other things is my mama, you know, she told me, she said, you know, when you get a belly full, you're going to get out of there. You're not going to stay anymore. And it did come to that point, you know. And when I did leave, I left with nothing. I just took my kids and the clothes that we had, and I just wanted to get out because all of those other things were just things. You know, they didn't mean anything, just my kids and our love for each other and our safety was all that mattered to me at that point. So I left and never looked back. You know, I've, I've had a chance to get to know you and, and your, family from, your family from a distance, but know you a little more personally. And I can tell that, uh, you know, your children are very close to you. And there's uh, a genuine love there. And so obviously the move that you made was real important so that they can have that love without the interference mm -hmm. of what took place. Uh, before we get into your success, you know, and what you've been, able, been willing to do to become a successful entrepreneur and so forth, um, tell us a little bit about what happened. I mean, what, you know, you submitted yourself quite a bit. I remember us talking about food stamps or something of that nature. You want to share well, with Well, yeah. That? I mean, you know, like I said, when I left, I didn't take anything. And I wasn't even working at the time. Um, so that was a huge, huge step. You know, and I was scared. You know, because I'm out in this big world with three kids depending on me. You know, I got very, very little child support. You know, that didn't go far, you know, because there's always clothes and school supplies and food. And, and the money just wouldn't stretch, you know, because if I put the kids in daycare, that would have cost me more. You know, every, every bit of the money I would have made. If you were to work? If I were to work. Well, then what happened? Well, I had to go down to the county offices and, and get on food stamps and talk about a humbling experience. Um, that was pretty humbling. I mean, being in the grocery store aisle and just sitting there stalling to where you can find an empty line to go get in so nobody would see what you were doing. That was, And when I first got on them, they were the little paper coupons that you had to, to use. And then they went to the little debit card thing. And, and you know, that, that wasn't as noticeable. But it was a very humbling thing. But, you know, I think my kids realized, you know, that, hey, you know, mom's here. Mom did what it took to take care of us. And we're together and we love each other so much, you know. And, and today, I really believe that that's made a huge impact on their life and the way they feel about their families. So you, okay, you broke away from your husband. You took your children with you. Um, you submitted yourself and went on food stamps. That's got to be quite humbling. 